Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. We give God the praise. We give him all the glory. And we give him all the honor. Ah, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Praise be, be to God. We thank God for his goodness and his grace. We thank God for his mercy. Hallelujah. His abundant mercy. Praise be to God. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. We have a little bit of technical difficulty, but we're going to get it right right now. Angels bow before him. So Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Uh, before we go on, please continue to wear your mask. Sanitize your hands. Don't let people... Uh, steer or guide you wrong. We as believers, we know where our protection comes from. And we thank God back on Calvary when Jesus shed his blood, the Bible says, by his stripes, we were healed. So we don't get into debate about should you wear a mask or shouldn't you wear it. The doctors and different individuals say we should put it on and wear it. And a lot of people's lives are being saved because of this. So we want to continue to use it and be obedient. We also want to be obedient to the word of God. Pastor Andrew is going to open us up with prayer. Very short prayer in Jesus' name. Father God, we just thank you. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we thank shall you, rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, that we were on the wake-up list this morning. Hallelujah. We give Jesus. you glory, honor, and praise. Yes, we thank God. you, Father God, for just yeah. being yeah. God. And we thank Jesus. you for keeping us. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If there's anyone who's never given their heart over to Jesus Christ before we go any further, uh, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then he says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. It says thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus Christ with thy mouth and believe in the heart that he died and rose from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Hallelujah. Won't you give your life over to Jesus Christ today? Just with me, repeat. Dear Heavenly Father, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross and rose from the dead. Hallelujah, you are my risen Savior. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart today. I'm saved. Hallelujah, I'm a believer in Jesus' name by faith because of his death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. We're excited today because I finally got Angela, my wife, to come on the air. I've been asking her for the longest. Praise be to God. And uh, thank God that uh, the Holy Spirit, I believe, has spoken to her heart. Hallelujah. Uh, to come on and join with her husband as we talk about the Word of God. There's so many things that's happening. Uh, and uh, we look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith in Matthew's 11, it says, come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Go to your Bibles. Go to your Bibles. Hallelujah. Matthew 29 says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble, hallelujah, in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is like we've heard that over and over and over again, but it's not until we believe God and trust God and read it. And I'm asking my wife to read uh, uh, Romans chapter 15, starting at the fourth verse. It says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, yes. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So it's in the word of God. We look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We thank God that, hallelujah, we take the yoke, hallelujah, and learn of him for uh, his ways, his burdens are light. So we uh, ask you to stay and stand on the promises of God. We understand all the things that's happening. We see all the things that are taking place and people are operating in fear, confusion, hate, doubt. But as believers, that's not how we Hallelujah. Go forth. The Bible says that uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Then it's to put on the whole armor of God that you're able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Hallelujah. 
For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. You shall find rest unto your soul. Having your Lord's word about with truth, I just interchanged the scriptures. But having your Lord's word about with truth, have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all the shield of faith, where you're able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So having read the scriptures that uh, Pastor, uh, that Angela read to you and myself, we want you to go back and meditate on it and stand on God's promises. I'm going to ask Angela to read a couple of things, and I want you to pay, be patient as we discuss. It. And you're welcome to join us. Uh, uh, to talk a little bit about subscribe. Come. Well, what you can do, you can, um, we're on Instagram under S.A. Gaskins underscore JSM. Um, our website is stg-ct.org. Um, our cash app is JSMCT88. And our email is also jsmct88 at gmail.com. So we're just asking you, you can drop us a line. You can go to our, our website. Um, our phone number is 302-482-1293. And we just thank God for those who have been calling, those who have been emailing, uh, those who have been uh, making remarks on uh, YouTube. Oh, also don't forget YouTube. You can subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. It's under Shane Gaskins on YouTube. And we just thank God for all of those who have been supporting us um, over the years, because this is a change for us. And well, not really just us, but the whole world. And I asked my uh, <laughs> wife to come on. Uh, there's so many negative and bad reports concerning relationships and marriage and family. And this is the time to step it up and stand on God's promises. But you can't stand on what you don't know. And that's why it's important, no matter what you hear today from any pastor, preacher, teacher, that you go back, read, study, and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. We have a short window, hallelujah, to bring forth. I don't know if that one's still going forth, but we just pray that you would go back and read the scriptures. Go back and find out, you know, what the Word of God says uh, concerning this word. I'm going to ask Pastor, I mean, Angela to read a little bit. Okay, we're going to be reading out of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And it says in verse 1, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Verse 2 says, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Verse 3 says, And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power and verse 5 says in second corinthians chapter 2 that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of god you know, Paul says, I, I, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of the wisdom of man. Uh, man has uh, given his opinion about everything, um, and often the opinions are swayed by their upbringing, by, by their education. Uh, by the culture that they uh, live in, um, and a number of different uh, measuring rods, of measuring sticks to measure where their thinking comes from. But the Bible says, wherever things are pure, wherever things are just, wherever things are lovely, and so on and so forth, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Why? Because we have to get our thinking right. As uh, Angela just read, uh, again, she said, and my speech, hallelujah, hallelujah, and my preaching was not, hallelujah, with enticing words of wisdom, man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You know, you know, especially today, this the climate today, uh, we saw it happen at the Capitol last week, how a number of people lost their lives. And on social, especially on social media, there's a lot of chatter that's going on. And even in the Christian community. 
And when we talk about um, uh, chatter, everybody has an opinion. But instead of us having an opinion, especially believers, we need to go back to what the word of God says uh, concerning what's taking place in this realm. I was um, on Instagram uh, the other day and I was just listening to some of the believers and what they were saying concerning this political situation. And one thing we need to know is that in 2 Timothy, it says that we need to pray for whoever is in authority yes. so that we may live, believers, Amen. we may live a quiet and yes. peaceable Hallelujah. life. Yes. And so we need to not focus on who is there and who, you know, Biden, we got Biden, we got Trump. Uh, we have this uh, political war that's going on uh, within the United States, yes. but we need to focus on what the word says and we need to pray for our leaders. Yeah, you might not agree with everything they have to say and you might not say, well, I really don't care for them and I don't like them, blah, 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 blah. But you need, as a believer, you need to pray for them in the name of Jesus, and, no matter who's in office. And you need to pray according to God's will and according to God's word, because again, uh, your upbringing, your thoughts, the way things have been uh, ingrained in your heart from a child has to be replaced to a certain degree uh, with what God says, because we want to operate, as we said, but uh, not in enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. I'm going to ask Andrew to read five reasons why the early church operated in power as by Marcelello and uh, some, some teaching we've learned over the years. And before we uh, again get started, uh, to those who are struggling in their relationship, I, I thank God for my wife coming on because we've been married for over 41 years. And uh, we met uh, back in college. And uh, we thank God um, that we were joined together, but it was not always easy and simple. Um, we've been hungry. We've been challenged in so many ways, ways. before I became a, a bishop, a pastor, even involved in the church. Praise be to God. We had so many things uh, because we were not centered in the things of God. And as God be, began to bring correction uh, in our lives, and I said, God, man couldn't do it, but God did. Um, we begin to operate in the spirit and not in the flesh, because the flesh, my wife is from Harlem, New York. I'm from Newark, New Jersey. <laughs> you might say that's not a big deal, and we make fun of it, because everybody from New York, Harlem, or New Jersey is not crazy and want to fight, and we, you know, and all that good stuff. But we uh, learned, praise be to God, from our parents, thank God for my parents, yes, we were not that God. kind of uh, people. Mm -hmm. But we did struggle with our attitudes. You're not going to talk to me that way, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, but then as we begin to... Uh, trust God and stand on God's promises, God began to speak to our heart about who should we be following and who should we choose. And that's important because relationships, hallelujah, are at an all-time high in terms of struggle. That's what they say. But I just believe that the men and women of God ought to be the light. Come on, let's be the light. And uh, as she reads, I want you to think about what God wants to do in our family, in our community, in our neighborhood, and in our country. Same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we've been married for the length of time that we uh, have, which is a small time uh, time in God's eyes. Uh, right. But it's major for us, and, and it's major for so many other folks. Our parents lived and had a, a, a long Jeopardy in terms of our their marriages, marriages yes. and uh, we learned from that, but that was not enough. You need right. more than that. So let's read and find out what God is saying. To us. So, so what we're going to read is five reasons why the early church operated in power. Amen. We got to say, where is our power, power. as believers? Where is our power? And it says the early Christians were totally dependent upon the Holy Spirit. Not upon what this one says or that one says and this one's opinion, but upon the Holy Spirit. They were open channels through which the power of God can flow that freely. That is so important because what channels, uh, what channels have you opened yourself up to? Uh, you know what I mean? Is it the powers of darkness? Is it witchcraft? What is it? Voodoo? Black magic? Uh, just disobedience. That's just 
it challenges you. Open the door and you allow things to come into your marriage, come into your home, your health, and your strength. But it says here, the Holy Spirit, praise be to God, there were open channels through which the power of God, hallelujah, could flow freely. So you have a responsibility. Go ahead, continue reading back. It says their minds were not cluttered with a traditional church structure. Yes. Therefore, they allowed God complete freedom to work in their lives in whatever manner he desired. Wow. When they preached the word, they spoke in the wisdom and power of God himself. They did not preach themselves. They preached the word of God. And you might say, well, I'm not a preacher, but you are an ambassador. And as believers, we are called to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Not just what we say, but how is our relationship? How, you living? how are we living? How are you living? Praise be to God. What are you doing on your job, in your home? The first one, because of time, it says unity. There was a very basic element of the early church, which was evident on the day of Pentecost. They were determined to remain in the upper room until they received the power promised by the Lord before he ascended to heaven. Before the church today will be able to go forth in this same power, it must come together in unity. That's a key word, the church, in unity. Believers, not this believer saying that, that believer saying something else, unity. And they were physically in one place. They remained, it said they remained in one place until they received the power promised by the Lord before he ascended in heaven. So uh, we have to find our place in Christ. Yes. Amen. And we have to allow the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, to guide us and to direct us in the way we should go. Before we go on, it says we need to examine the five very important characteristics they possess, which enable them to continue in that operation. We, uh, Angela just said unity. Uh, the unity, you want to be unified in the things of Christ. You want to be unified in the Father and in the Son and in the Holy Spirit. Because now the Holy Spirit is our teacher, yes. all right? Jesus' death, burial, because of his death, burial, and resurrection, praise be to God. He said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless, but I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is going to lead you and guide you into all truth. And that's why we have the Gospels, the good news. We operate with all the bad news, as Angela said, with all the challenges we faced on last week, with all the things that's going in the, in the political arena, in the social arena, with blacks and whites and, and whatever. We still have peace in the storm. Why? In the midst because of Because of the word of God. Because we have our hearts and minds fixed on the things of Jesus Christ. And it does not mean that they're not going to come our way. It does not mean that they're going, they're, they're, they're going to, uh, uh, we're not going to be in the mix. But while in the mix, praise be to God. While in the storm, praise be to God. God shows us how to navigate through all those challenges and be the light in these challenges dark areas in this dark time and for peace in the midst of the storm but as we continue with the first one remember we're reading five reasons why the early church operated in power unity jesus christ is not coming back for a bride that is full of strife and division Amen. he is coming from a, for a bride whose heart is fixed and in one accord according to the return of the bridegroom Amen. The second reason why they operated in power was boldness. Boldness, boldness. boldness in the early church came as a result of the indwelling presence, once again, of the Holy Spirit. Glory. Regardless of the persecution they faced, Say that again. regardless of the persecution they faced, mm -hmm. the beatings, the stonings, the imprisonment, and death, they continued to boldly proclaim the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. The church today the church of the living God, we must not operate in fear, mm -hmm. but we must march forward with the same boldness characteristic of the early church. God did not give us the spirit of fear. He's given us power. He's given us love and he's given us a sound mind. He's also given us an example uh, that we could pattern our faith and our belief in. Um, if we're tied into just our religion, our denomination, we get lost in the mix. But when we understand, praise be to God, that all barriers have been broken between the believer because of the precious blood of Jesus, because of the Father, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now we begin to operate 
as the body, not these local entities which we thank God for. Yes. Praise be to God. But it's bigger than that. It's deeper than that. When you get into your uh, group and your denomination and say, this is how we do it, praise be to God. It has to line in with the word of God. And when it aligns in with scriptures through the power of the Holy Spirit, not our theology, not what we think, not, because I, I know some, some people that's brilliant in terms of the king's English, but not in terms of the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord. And what makes us bright and brilliant is the spirit of God and the Holy Spirit that leads and guides us. The third reason is love. This characteristic of the early church is the true mark of discipleship. Yes. Jesus told his disciples that they would be known by their love one for another. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, can I just say before Amen. we go again, she said they continued boldly proclaiming the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the time for us to be bold. If you ever will be, this is the time for us to really be bold. We don't have to go around, you know, uh, yelling and screaming, declaring Jesus. First of all, we have to be bold in our walk with Christ, our conversation with what we say, but also how do we do? We're not just hearers of the word. We are doers of the word, and we have to be bold in our approach to operating in the things of God. They continue boldly proclaiming. Are you proclaiming Jesus Christ in your job, in your home, at your school, in your community, in your nation, we ought to proclaim, hallelujah, boldly the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. How? It says they were bold in the early church as a result in dwelling in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Praise be to God. As a result of the, how did they get it? They dwelt in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And regardless of the persecution they face, notice they face persecution. Do not think because you have trusted God and you believe in God, you're not going to face persecution. Hallelujah. What did they do when they faced it? Hallelujah. They were trusting and believing God. They were operating under his authority and under his power. They didn't come up with some kind of nuance or some kind of, you know, uh, for ways to get out of this or any other way other than looking to Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. And, you know, the early church, when you talk about boldness and, you know, even they were bold in their love. Yes. It says here that the early church was bonded together by love. When mm. one brother had a need, another would minister to that need mm. um, because of the motivating force of love. If there was a deep rooted it was their deep-rooted love of God which caused them to lay down their lives for the sake of building God's kingdom on earth. And he said the early church was uh, the mark of discipleship, the early church. Jesus told his disciples that they would be known by what? Their love for what? For one, one another. another. The fourth reason why the early church operated in power was steadfastness. In the early church, the Christians structured their lives around the church. Amen. It was their life. Amen. The word tells us they met daily in the temple, <coughs> excuse me, and ministered to one another from house to house. Today, most Christians recognize the church as a place where services are held on Sundays and sometimes during the week. We need to enlarge our concept of the church today so that we are extensions of the church every day of our lives. We should faithfully study and commune with God daily so that when we do meet with other believers, we can minister to God, we can minister to each other, and to any unbelievers who are present. So steadfastness was key, and it should be key now. The fifth reason is yieldingness. The early church knew the importance of being led by the Holy Spirit. Once again, the Holy Spirit is key in all of this. Mm. Before making any major decisions, they prayed and they fasted until they received specific direction from God. Hmm. Today, before the church can experience a breakthrough of power, we must be willing to lay aside all man-made doctrines Hallelujah. and ideologies. Hallelujah. We must humble ourselves before God in periods of fasting and prayer. Praise the God. early church took the world because they received power and because they knew unto how to remain in a position whereby the power of God could flow 
through them. Amen. So there's a number of key words there as um, being st uh, steadfast, remain in a position and yield to the power of God and let that power flow through us. And I know our time is winding up. So we just want to just close out a little bit and just put this all together. Well, uh, the, the only way we really could put this all together is if you would go back and read, because we've just given you so much information with so little time. And then I, I thank God for uh, Angela coming on with me. But earlier, um, I want to encourage you out of Matthew 11, 24, it says, 29, it says, come to me all who are weary and burdened. And a lot of people are weary and, and burdened today. But as we begin to trust how the example in God's word, we just read out of Romans, right? We talked about for whatsoever things were written, was a foretime was written for us. For it was us. written uh, for our learning. So as we uh, learn from the things of the word of God and Holy Spirit teaches us and guides us, it takes us back to being steadfast. It takes us back to yieldness. Being able to yield to who? Yield to the Spirit of God because you're going to yield to somebody and praise be to God. God has already placed, put in place, hallelujah, whom it is we should serve. All we have to do is make a decision. Some of you need to make a decision and trust that God is doing something because this did not just pertain to the early church. When one brother had a need, watch this. Another would minister to that need because of the motivating forces of what? Of love. 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 Amen. And that word love is a characteristics of who God is. My God, God is love. And as children of the Most High God, we have to trust that God is speaking to our heart. Yieldingness. Who are you yielding yourself to? I mean, is it to your job? Is it to TV? Is it to the temporal things, because the things that of this world are temporal. The cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches, it chokes the word of God and we become unfruitful. Unfruitful. And we and we don't want to be unfruitful believers Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Especially during this time with all the things that's taking place. Yes. People have said this has never happened. Well, it's never happened in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. And so this is the time that we need to uh, stand fast. We need to stand strong. We need to hold on to the word of God. But I know we got a few minutes left. The, 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 listen at what it says. We read earlier. They continue. The Bible says they continue with what? Boldness. They continue to boldly proclaim the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. The church today, the church of the living God, we must operate, praise be to God, in reverence to God. Hallelujah. But 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 must march forward. We can't operate in the fear. You know, uh, don't allow fear to grab our spirit and our mind and our heart. And therefore, we begin to operate without the power of God because we're always going to uh, fumble. We're always going to mess up. So, you know, we want you to go back and read. We came out of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, and we used... Um, the Financial Breakthrough Spiritual Warfare Bible by Morris Cirillo. Excellent Bible that deals with your, uh, not just the spiritual, which is first, but also the financial. If you need that financial breakthrough, uh, this is a good time to go and study the word. If you have a need, we always say, sow a seed. And so we're just asking you to sow a seed. Give to your church. You can give your tithe. You can give your offerings, you know, to various, to your church. And even to this, to this ministry right here, Jesus Saves Ministries and Bishop Shane Gaskins. Once again, we're on Facebook um, under Jesus Saves Ministries, JSMCT, YouTube under Shane Gaskins, Instagram, S-A Gaskins underscore JSM, and our website is STG dash c c t dot org and i want to encourage you to go back and read you we flew through these yes. scriptures amen and mm -hmm. our goal and our aim is for you to go back and search out what god wants to say to you god has a specific word for this specific hour yes he's yes. not ignorant as to what's going on yes. he knows you're hurt <laughs> The virus have taken a lot of people. Yes. Praise be to God. But we trust 
that God is in control. And he'll bring you comfort and peace in your time of sorrow. Those who lost their loved ones and their family members say, how could God allow? God has already made provisions already. for us to make it through the storm, to live in the storm, and to rise above the storm. Amen. Amen. So while we are challenged and while we see in the natural all the things that's taking place and it's troubling a lot of people, we have to look to the spiritual Look to the help from which the help from which our help comes from. Heaven, Hallelujah! Yes. And as we begin to look to Him, the author and finish our faith, we begin to stand strong in the Lord and the power of His might. That means you have to go back and read these particular scriptures. We gave you a, a few real quick, but go back, meditate on it, strengthen you. We guarantee, we put a guarantee out there that as you read God's word and study God's word, it's going to do what? It's going to strengthen your inner man, your spirit man, the real you, and you're going to be able to weather the storm. You're going to be Amen. able to fight the good fight of faith, and you're going to be able to keep moving in victory in Jesus' name. In victory in Jesus' name. Once again, our email is jsmct88 at gmail.com. Our number here is 302-482-1293. That's 302-482-1293. 1293. We have done a relocation and you know we're just adjusting some things and we just thank God for new beginnings as we begin 2021. We don't want it to be a new year yes. and an old you. We want it to be a new year and a new you. And when we say it might not be a physical change, but if there is a spiritual change, that outweighs the physical change any day. Anytime. And we're looking to connect with you. Praise yes. be to God. We believe that God has many gifts in the body of Christ. And we would love to hear from you. And we would love for you to be a part of Jesus Saves Ministries and what he's called us to do around the globe in and, Jesus' mighty name. And, you know, as we build a virtual church, we've been hearing from people all over the United Amen. States and abroad. Amen. So we encourage you, take these various videos, share them, pass them on, uh, study them, read along with us as we read the scriptures Amen. and as we grow in the grace Amen. of God. Amen. It's just been a blessing to be here. I know I haven't Thanks, been God. on here for, for a while, but Amen. God has just been uh, building me up Amen. and uh, just is just been an adjustment period. Amen. And it takes place with a lot Amen. of us. Amen. You know, that adjustment comes and Amen. And as we make those changes, we and, and what I want to emphasize is with all that we read is that it said, focus and keep your eyes Amen. on the Holy Spirit. Now, Amen. the Holy Spirit, remember, he leads us and he Amen. guides us into all truth. Amen. So as you uh, begin your day today, we pray Amen. that you have a blessed day. Encourage someone, uh, share the word with Amen. someone, share these videos um, with someone and be blessed in Jesus name. Hallelujah. I thank God for this lady right here. She's been a strong tower to help move this ministry forth. And you're going to continue to hear some great things from Angela. So we love you. God bless you as we close. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye.